I have been asked by both members here in the church and people outside of the church who have never heard um, about, talk about numbers as they relate spiritually uh, in the Bible. And of course, uh, I did it about two years ago, uh, maybe a little over two years ago. I preached it again. I first preached this message almost 30 years ago. Now, I had planned on doing what I had preached just two years ago. And I was just going to whip that out and just do it. But the Lord wouldn't allow me to do that. I couldn't even find the message. What I had to do was to preach the original message that I preached some almost 30 years ago. And it was preached prior to doing a series on Revelation. Because if you are going to study the book of Revelation, you need to have an understanding of the symbolisms of numbers. So I, I, so today, if you have it in cruise control because you heard this two years ago, turn the cruise control off. We're going to preach this against the backdrop of the book of Revelation. Now, I really need you to be prayerful with me and prayerful for me for the next few moments. And, I, and at the end of this, I'm going to show you how I believe that God still speaks through us through numbers. It helped me get some understanding and some peace about the death of my wife. And I'll explain that at the end of the message because of numbers and understanding them. Now, if you're listening to me to think that you're going to get an edge up on picking numbers for the lottery, no, it's not about that at all. This is spiritual. All right? Our text this morning comes from the book of Revelation, of course. And I'm just going to read, and this is a topical message. And when normally we preach expository messages where we read the text and then we open it up and preach it either verse by verse. But this is a topical message. We're going to talk from a topic, and that's numbers. Revelation 1 and 20 says, The mysteries of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. I briefly want to talk about this morning the numerology of Revelation and the Bible. And when we break that numerology down, ology means study. Numo means number. So we're going to kind of study some numbers this morning. There is one thing that we all need to understand is that there are a lot of symbolism that is used when it comes to numbers. And of course, there are symbolisms that are dealt with throughout the book of Revelation and the Bible. And it is important that we understand what these numbers are symbolic of. Now, you may want to get a paper and pencil, uh, but this will be recorded and you can refer back to it at a later time. But you may want to write some of these scriptures now. Now, Revelation is the only book in the Bible that has not been fulfilled. And that's what makes this book so important. All the other books have been fulfilled, but this revelation that John received out on the Isle of Patmos, the other scriptures that you need to find, and you may want to write them down, Ephesians 4, uh, John's Gospel 8, and 1 Thessalonians 5. And I'm going to give you a few more uh, than that. Revelation means unveiling 
or revealing something which was previously hidden or unknown. John received this revelation, this unveiling, this revealing out on the Isle of Patmos, he says, on the Lord's day. Now, in order to understand how the tribulation is going to come and what the rapture is going to be, you must understand certain symbols and emblems that are here in the book of Revelation. Now we talk about the rapture. The rapture in Revelation is found at the beginning of Revelation chapter 4. In the King James it says, come up hither. That is the church that's being raptured out of this world. So if you are one of God's blood-bought children, you don't have to worry about the tribulation. And then some scholars have divided the tribulation in half. Three and a half years, they call it the tribulation. And after that, the Antichrist, who becomes ruler, he, he, he reveals himself. And then he wreaks havoc on this world. He makes Hitler look like a schoolboy, the Antichrist. That will remain for the last uh, uh, two and a half years. So here we are, three and a half years. So here we are. The verse that we read for our text, I don't know if you understood that verse or not, but what is clear, the number seven is used quite a few times. I'm going to tell you how many times you will find seven in the Bible. It's used quite a few times. The number seven is very important in understanding the book of Revelation. Now, now let us look at the numerology of Revelation. Numbers, as we read the text, has also a spiritual meaning. Did you get that? Numbers have a spiritual meaning. And we want to be able to reveal the spiritual meanings of numbers. Aristotle said number is the principle of all things. Now, the first number obviously is number one. The number one, number of unity, means primacy. One is a divine number because it speaks of God. One in the book of Revelation and throughout all of the Bible tells us that we have but one God. The Jewish Shuma, which is found in Deuteronomy 6 and 4 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Zechariah 14 and 9, and the Lord shall be king over the earth in all that day shall there be one Lord and his name is one. Did you get that? Now, in Ephesians 4 and 4, there is one body, one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. Verse 5. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Verse 6. One God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. So one in the Bible stands for God. It stands for primacy. This great unity that Everything is summed up in this one God. God is one God. Never get the idea that we have three gods because that's polytheism. The prefix poly means many. Hmm, many. Huh, and the suffix theos is God. Many gods. We do not have many gods, but we have one God. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, we have 
one God. Now, the next number, I hope you got that. The next number and the symbolical meaning of it is the number two. Somebody say two. In the Bible, the number two stands for witness. The number two. Jade, I'm glad you agree with me. I'm just having fun with it. It speaks of confirmation. Ha haven't you ever said something and you thought about doing something and then somebody calls you and almost tell you the same thing and you say, girl, I just got confirmation. I'm going to date him. No, I'm <laughs> It means witnessing to that which has been stated. Now, turn if you would turn your Bibles to the Gospel of John chapter 8. But whole Revelation 1 and 20. If you go to verse 17, and it should be written in red, which means these are the actual words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, verse 17 of the Gospel of John chapter 8 says, It is also written... In your law that the testimony of two men is true. So again, two is the number of witness or confirmation. In other words, when two people say the same thing, it tends to confirm what has been said. When you're in a meeting and parliamentary procedure is in order, someone gets up and says, I move that we do such and such. And the second person gets up and says, I second that. In other words, I confirm or I witness to the motion. Even the Bible, listen to me today, even the Bible is divided into two sections, the Old Testament, the New Testament. It confirms God in that the Old Testament is God concealed. And in the New Testament, he's God revealed. In other words, the Bible confirms the Lord God being revealed through Jesus Christ. So two means witness. Even, now get this, this is good. Even in the Trinity, Jesus is the second head in the Trinity. Now, what is Jesus called here in the book of Revelation? You will find that Jesus, the second person of the Godhead, if you go back to Revelation chapter 1, is called the faithful witness. If you look at verse 5, and from Jesus, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. So on the first part of that verse, it says that Jesus Christ is the faithful witness. Huh? And you remember to confirm what I'm saying that when Jesus rose from the dead and the women went to the sepulcher and when they got there found that the stone had been rolled away to give witness to his resurrection there were two angels that were standing there at the door of the sepulcher and when and then when the Lord stayed here for 40 days Following his resurrection, 
decided to go on back to glory. He boarded a cloud on Mount Olive. In Acts 1 and 10, and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Verse 11, and also said, Oh, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into the heaven? That same Jesus, which is taken up from us into heaven, shall come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. He's coming back, church. Don't you listen to all these dummies telling you uh, it's, it's a fairy tale. And, uh, he's coming back. So when the Lord Jesus Christ got ready to send the disciples out, he, he, he had 70 of them. He sent them out how? Two by two. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Now, now let me show you something very interesting about Revelation. In Revelation 11 and 3. And we're just going to read a part of that. He says, and I will give power unto my two witnesses. Now get this. Now, according to this chapter of Revelation, during this so-called period of the Great Tribulation, there will be two people who are going to witness through the earth during the time of the great tribulation. Now remember, we gone. If you're a blood-bought child of God, you ain't got to worry about the tribulation. You, he, he done, you've been caught up. We talking about these hard-headed folk that you beg to, to accept Jesus. Mm -hmm. See, we we under grace right now, but 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 after the rapture, <laughs> the grace faucet <laughs> is cut off. <laughs> if you <laughs> want to go back with Jesus, <laughs> you better accept him now. <laughs> and I like the way the old folks said it. <laughs> While the blood <laughs> is running warm <laughs> through your vein, <laughs> you better say yes, Lord. <laughs> I believe on your Lord Jesus Christ. That God raised him from the dead. I believe. Hmm. I'm sorry, I gotta contain myself. I'm getting a little bit too happy. Uh huh. Uh, so the earth uh, is going to witness through, they're gonna go throughout uh, the earth witnessing. Two is the number of witness. Say that. Two is the number of witness. Now, Let's move on to three. Somebody say three. three. Mm -hmm. This is, and this is the one that, we, that, that the church community is so divided on. Yeah, oh yeah, we divide it. <clears throat> the number three. This is a divine number. Remember, I told you that one is a divine number because it stands for unity that points to the primacy of God. But three is also a divine number because it points to the triunity and compound unity of God. One, the unity of God Three, the triunity of God. When we baptize in this church, we baptize in the Trinitarian formula in Matthew's gospel. Jesus says, Go ye therefore teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, that's one, in the name of the Son, that's two, and of the Holy Ghost, that's three. So why then do we baptize that way? We baptize that way because this one God unity 
has revealed himself to us in three persons. Now, you know, when I was going over this, because it's difficult for many to understand this concept. <laughs> because, uh, but the Lord gave me, and I hope this helps you understand. See, God can do this. It's, it's like I have three different roles. Pastor, when my wife was alive, husband, and father. Now, what he did was, he meaning God, he actually from himself <laughs> created, <laughs> made the second person, Jesus. Then the third person, the Holy Spirit, all from him. Uh, uh, is that helping you understand what I'm try, trying to get you? Because some people are saying it's Jesus only. <laughs> but, but, but God <laughs> was able <laughs> to make them two other persons. So it's three persons. Three, the number of Trinity. We remember reading in the book of Isaiah. This is important. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah said, when he looked into the temple, he says in verse 1 of chapter 6, In the year huh, that King Ezra died, huh, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Verse 2, Above it stood the seraphims, which had six wings, and with twain huh, he covered his face, huh, with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. Verse 3, and one cried huh, unto another huh, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth huh, is full huh, of his glory. Why did they say, holy, holy, holy? They said it three times because God the Father, is, holy is God the Son, and holy is God the Holy Ghost. So that's what the Bible means when it says that man is created in the image of God. Listen up. Why? Because our God has a personhood of triunity. And we have a trichotomy. Did you get that? We have the spirit, the soul, and the flesh. Mm -hmm. Now, some theologians will tell you that man is a dichotomy. The prefix die meaning two. But as I've already said, we believe that man is a trichotomy. Three, the body, the soul, and the spirit in God's image and likeness. Now, let me prove it to you. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And I'm going to read verse 23, the middle of that clause. It says, and I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. And, and the next number that I want to deal with. Did everybody get that? You can go back and listen to that again. Now. The next number is number four. Somebody say four. Four stands for God's creation. Four is the number of the earth. It is the world number. The creation number. The number of the land. Be sure you understand this. That whenever you see the number four in the book of Revelation, 
that it stands for earth number. Now, let's see that. If you would look at Revelation chapter 7. Now, let's read starting at verse 1. And watch the emphasis on for an association to the earth. Verse 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth nor on the sea nor on any tree. Now, Revelation chapter 20 talks about the devil who is going to be loose from his prison when the great tribulation comes and shall go out to deceive the nation which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Huh. So, so you see how the number four is linked to the earth? Four seasons? Huh? Revelation chapter 4 helps us understand this symbolism. Now, remember John is caught up in heaven in a spirit of a vision to the throne of God. Listen to me. God throws back the curtain. He allows John to see the throne Something that man had never seen. And can you see, see some things that no eye has ever seen before? Verse uh, 6. And behold, the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystals. Listen up. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. That's King James. Now, this word beast, and you know when I was young and I would read that, I, ooh, that was like the boogeyman. Ooh, what kind of beast? Mm, but, but, but listen up. You, you, you have to go to the Greek to really get the understanding. Beast is an unfortunate translation. When it says beast, in this translation, King James, the revised king doesn't say that. I'm going to tell you what it says in a minute. I looked up the word beast in the Greek, and it's not talking about a wild beast or something unassociable to the earth. Mm -hmm. Beast. In the Greek, the word is zoas. And that is the same word we get our science, zoology. Okay? It means the science of animals, living creatures, animals upon the earth. So a translation for beast in the English would be zoas, would be living creature. Say living creature. That's what it really should be. If four is an earth number, then that is to say that there are four living creatures. Now, watch what he's trying to get over to you. Oh, I love this. Because see, some of y'all need this right about now. So, 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 be 10, 10, listen in. Now, Look at verse 7. And the first beast, living creature, that's what it said, was like a lion. The second beast, living creature, like a calf. The third beast, living creature, had a face as a man. The fourth beast, living creature, was like a flying eagle. What is he saying here? When he goes through the lion, the calf, the man, the flying eagle. What he's really saying is that everything, 
see that God has created upon planet Earth is praising God because he's looking in this chapter at the throne of God and these living creatures that he sees them praising God and how true that is because everything upon the face of the earth that have breath is expected to praise the Lord. The Lord, the lion, praises him with a roar. The bear <laughs> praises him with a growl. The mule praises him with a hee-haw. The owl praises him with a whoo. The cow praises him with a moo. The duck praises him with a quack. The, the kitten praises him with a meow. <laughs> the dog praises him with a bark. <laughs> I think I need to ask you, what do you praise him with? Because <laughs> everybody ought to take a praise break sometimes and give him some praise. Because when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for us, my soul ought to cry out. When was the last time you said hallelujah? See, if the only time you can give him a praise break is in church, something wrong with your praise. Sometimes, ha! You ought to get happy in your own home when you get up in the morning because sometimes to appreciate where you are today, sometimes you need to look back and see where you came from. You know how you began. Didn't have nothing. But oh, God kept on blessing you. And you get up and you walk down the hallway of your house and you start looking. There's furniture in the living room and furniture in the bedroom and open the refrigerator you got plenty of food and look in the pantry I got plenty of food there listen you ought to get happy at home because of the goodness of God that he's been so good to you listen over a half million people have died from the virus but look at you you sit here today you watch me by, by live stream it could have been you it's only by the grace of God that he spared you to see another day and sometimes you ought to praise the Lord hey 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 let everything let everything In fact, you ought to be praising him more. I know some of y'all so sophisticated. You don't want your sorors to see you get happy. Well, you home now. You can raise your hand and say, thank you. Let him know you appreciate you were in a store standing next to somebody that had the virus. But God blessed you. And you ought to act like he blessed you. Don't act like you're doing me a favor by coming to church. I just, and, and, and you know, it's a shame. We got very few people here. Church is open. Y'all have got two, where's the camera? Which camera is on me? Raise your hand. Y'all have gotten too comfortable at home. Get up and get yourselves together and come out to the house of the Lord because his presence is here in a special way. You ought to come on with me to my father's house because the presence of the Lord is here. How do you know, Reverend? I can feel it. In the atmosphere. Mean to tell me you can't get dressed, come out, and the Lord heard you. I wish we could go to church. You know, this, 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 uh, uh, 
virtual streaming. It's all right, but you know, I, I wish I could go back to, and you just lying. You just lying. Come on out here. I know some of you others with children, you want to come. Some of y'all, God has been good to you. Just give them a wave off, friend. Huh. That's what this is. You don't have to say nothing. Just wave your hand. Oh, God's so good. Now, see, y'all made me get off track. So every animal upon the face of the earth uh, ought to praise or should praise the Lord. And that's what he's saying here. Sound, uh, simple as that. So when you see four, it doesn't mean one, two, three, four. It's not saying that. When he uses four, he's using four to mean creation. Because four is the world number. And at the end of that eighth verse, it says, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come, past, present, <laughs> and future. Isn't that wonderful? Earth number. Now, you have to understand these keys if you want to understand this book. And when you study the history of the world, it's amazing how spiritual things can be brought out of worldly things. Listen up. Did you not know that we have only had four empires in the world? There's never been but four empires on planet Earth. Babylonian was empire number one. Conquered by the Persians. Empire number two. Conquered by the Greek. Empire number three. Conquered by the Romans. Empire number four. There has never been but four empires on planet Earth. Because four is an earth number and God has these things written not only in astronomy but God also has written them in history his story of course when you start putting numbers together listen up the earth number and the number 10 which is the number of completion hmm are four times ten. That refers to earthly testing. Listen. Earthly trials and troubles. Remember. Let me show you. Remember. When Noah was about to get on the ark. And after he got on there it rained for how long? Forty days. <laughs> See, y'all just thought the Lord pulled them numbers. He speaks through his numbers. Trials and testing. Testing times. And when Jesus was baptized at the River Jordan and fasted and prayed, he went into the wilderness fasting for how long? Forty days and forty nights. And Satan came to him at the end. And when Moses got ready to receive the Ten Commandments. He got them staying on Mount Sinai for how long? Forty days. Oh, it looked, it, this, it's in the book, y'all. So four is God's earth number multiplied by ten. The number of completion gives you forty trial and testing. That might be why some people say, <laughs> life don't begin until you're 40. Say amen, son. You're not there yet. Yeah, you got a couple years, but, but, but life don't begin until you're, and see those of us that are over 40, we saying amen. Amen. See, you got you young whippersnappers walking around here talking about, I'm old, and you 30 something years. Listen, you don't can't even spell old. Keep living. Keep living. Now, I gotta I gotta move on. 
I didn't intend to get this happy. I won't get this chance again until the next third Sunday, so I got to take advantage of it. Now, let's go to number five. Five and ten. Now, I'm going to say something that you millennials are not going to know what I'm talking about. So listen up. When I went over this, I said, Lord, time sure brings about a change. The number five and ten can be studied together because they are basically the same. We used to refer to the dime store as the five and ten store. Y'all don't know what a dime store is. Woolworth went out of business many years ago. You the millennial I'm going to. You don't know what no dime story is, do you? No, and most of your peers don't either. <laughs> but it was a five and dime. Now today they got the dollar store. Mm, uh, yeah, I know you know dollar, dollar general and all the rest of them, but, 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 but the five and ten. My mother used to say, did you go to the dime store? When I was a kid, oh yeah. That meant Woolworth. You, don't, you ain't never heard of Woolworth, have you? No, I know it. Because basically it's the same. Five, here we go. I got to hurry up and finish because y'all's patience is short. Five symbolizes completeness, totalness, like five fingers, five toes, five senses. That five means fullness and completion. So it is with ten. Ten is just a double of five. They'll complete, still total, ten fingers, ten toes. Again, it means completeness. You're going to see how, it use, how it's used in the Bible, and especially here in the book of Revelation. When God gave his complete moral law to the children of Israel, how many laws did he give them? He gave them ten commandments. If they've abided by the ten commandments, that was all the moral obedience that they needed to give because it was total and complete. Now, if you would turn your Bibles to Revelation, you don't have to turn. Uh, I remember, I, this is what we were doing almost 30 years ago. We came to church with our Bibles. You got your Bibles on your phone now. Now, this chapter is going to tell you about the devil's, the Antichrist. It is the devil's Superman. He's going to do all of the dirty work of Satan. When the battle comes, we've heard talk about the battle of Armageddon. He is the Antichrist. Revelation 3 and 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Now, watch what the beast had. Having seven heads, watch, and ten horns. Now, this is important that you get this. Listen up. Now, in Revelation, you find not only are numbers used symbolically, but certain things are used as symbols of certain things. Huh. In Bible prophecy, a horn, whenever you see a horn, a horn is always a symbol of power. In this verse, a beast that has ten horns is the number of completeness. This speaks of the complete power. There will be a time when the devil's antichrist, the devil's superman, will have complete power upon the face of the earth during the great tribulation. But the great tribulation will not come until after the rapture. The word rapture means caught up. So only when Jesus comes to get the church 
And we are caught up to meet him in the air when the church gets home. Then God will permit the devil to turn loose this antichrist. Do you notice when you read, and of course I'm teaching from the Calvinistic uh, 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 theology on, on, on Revelation. But, 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 but have you noticed when you turn to Revelation 1, church, church. Revelation 2, church, church. Revelation 3, church, church. But when you get to Revelation 4, at the very beginning it says, come up hither. That's the church. You get the five, no church. Get the six, no church. Get the seven, no church. You don't hear church again until Revelation chapter 2. We gone. Somebody say, we gone. Oh, yes. So only when Jesus comes to get the church, we are caught up to meet him in the air. When the church gets home, then God will permit the devil to turn loose this Antichrist. He will have ten horns. Now get this. He will have ten horns, which mean he will have complete power. Now, no, listen up. This Antichrist will completely rule the world in its last days. So here's a beast that has seven heads, ten horns. Now, the B clause, that 13th chapter of Revelation says, having seven heads, ten horns, and upon his horns, ten crowns, and upon his head, the name blasphemy. That is the number five, which also gives us the number ten. Now, let's look at the number six. Hmm. Somebody say six. The number six is a number of a man. Why? Because man was created on the sixth day of creation. Now, if you would turn your Bibles to Revelation chapter 13, verse 17. And that's, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Verse 18 is the key verse. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. What is his number? For it is the number of a man. And his number is three hundred, three score and six. Remember, a score is 20 years. Now, let's look at this three godly, divine. Six represents human man. Six, six, six. Three sixes. What does it mean? It means that here there will be a man pretending to be God. He's going to be acting like he's God. Now remember, all of the God, all of God's people are going to be gone. But he won't be doing anything but deceiving all the other devils. <laughs> he will be playing the role of God, but nothing but a regular man, the devil's superman. Now, in a moment. We're going to show you that seven is perfect number. And that's another reason why man is a six. Because man is certainly not a seven. And everybody ought to say amen. Now, let's move to the number seven. There is no more exciting number in all of the Bible 
as the number seven. <clears throat> Hold on. Boy, with this mic, y'all can even hear me swallow. Now, there is no more exciting number in all of the Bible as the number seven. That's why I took our text from Revelation chapter one. Oh, you don't want to miss all this. I'm near the end, y'all. Why do we call the number seven the perfect number? <laughs> number of perfection. Hmm. Because three plus four equals seven. And seven is heaven. In other words, seven is three plus four. Three, a divine number. Four, the number of the earth. So when God, heaven and earth gets together, then things start working out. Oh, I wish y'all could get that. Three divide plus four earth is seven. Don't go nowhere yet, young man. I, I'm going to need you in a minute. I'm, I need you to find middle C for me. Now, I'm giving you enough time because I know it's somewhere on there. Okay. All right. Now, so what this is, is earth crowned with heaven is seven. Earth four crowned with three heaven is seven. God rested on the seventh day. You have seven days in a week. God built into the universe the musical scale. There are seven notes on a musical scale and the eighth scale is nothing but a repetition of the first one Seven is the perfect number. Now, give me a middle C. Yeah, real loud. Just hold it. Now, that's middle C. A Jewish boy was circumcised on the eighth day. The number eight <laughs> means a new beginning. Oh, y'all don't hear me? <laughs> so, if I say, play me middle C, uh, you know what? That's a little low for my rank. Give it to me an octave higher. An octave is the prefix for eight. Y'all don't hear me. I'm just starting uh, all over uh, again. I don't know about y'all, uh, but I've had some number eights in my life uh, that I had to start uh, all over uh, again. Uh, things that I thought uh, I wouldn't have to do no more. I have a number eight. I'm starting uh, all over again. Rosemary, that's where you are. You're at number eight. Some things you got to start all over again. But the good news is you're not by yourself. That when you are God's child, you're not in it all by yourself. How do you know that? Well, I heard the master say, I'm going away, but I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to pray to the father that he sends you another comforter. And in Latin, it's comfortore. And what does that mean, Reverend? It means to accompany and go along with. Come here, Rosemary. Come here. Lord, give me some. Hey, 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 I know you get lonely sometimes. I know it's hard raising your babies, but the comforter is with you. 
And sometimes when you don't think you can make it, the comforter will pick you up, turn you around. Won't he do it? I said, won't he do it? You're not in this struggle by yourself. I know it looks like you're alone by yourself, but God is with you. He made a promise. And you know what? Every time I check the record, from Genesis to Revelation, anything that God says, you can stick a pin in it. You can count on it. Oh, I don't mean that you're not going to have some crying nights, some crying midnights. But he also said, weeping may endure for a night, but joy, joy. I didn't intend to get happy, y'all. Oh. Mm. Now, I'm going to try to finish this. Now go to Revelation chapter 3. We'll explain about what we mean when we say perfect. Hmm, you need to hear this. Well, Reverend, if you stop detouring and get to it, we'll hear it. Blame it on the Holy Ghost. Well, Revelation chapter 3, verse 1. And unto the angels of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of who? Of God. Now, this sounds ambiguous. I thought we only had one spirit, one God. And here this text is talking about seven spirits of God. I'm so glad that I brought this up. What is John talking about here? Seven spirits of God. What is John saying? He's not talking about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spirits. What he's really saying is the perfect spirit of God. And when he says seven spirits of God, he's saying the perfect spirit of God that's watching over the church. He wrote to Sardis and Saul the perfect spirit of God and when you understand how God is using these numbers it makes a whole lot of sense to you but if you try to get in this book and not understand the symbolism of these numbers you're going to be hopelessly at sea because you will drown you must understand what these symbols mean I wished I could quit, but I can't. I got to get this done. I'm going to. You stop getting happy. Now. Said I wasn't going to tell nobody. But I just couldn't keep it to myself. <laughs> oh, I may not get this chance again. You going to let me preach next third Sunday? <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Well, Revelation chapter 3, verse 1, is just using the number 7 in a symbolic form. Now, Revelation chapter 5, John again is still in heaven, and he's still beholding the throne of God. Now, get this. Now, watch this. Verse 6 of chapter 5 of Revelation. And I behold, held, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and on the four beasts, that's those four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain. Notice how he is described now. Having uh, seven horns. Uh, now that beast uh, they saw uh, out at sea uh, in chapter. 
out uh, in the other chapter, uh, he had 10. Now Jesus uh, doesn't have uh, but seven. Uh, Y'all get this? Now I'm going to show you uh, that it's not in uh, the number, uh, it's in the meaning. Uh, remember, 10 uh, is complete. Uh, if the beast uh, has 10 horns, uh, it means uh, he's got complete power. Uh, but Jesus uh, has seven horns. Uh, that means uh, he's got perfect power. Uh, I want my God uh, to be perfect. Uh, and if he's perfect, uh, he will be complete. Uh, but complete uh, does not necessarily mean he's perfect. Uh, having seen uh, seven horns, watch this. Seven eyes. Now watch the symbolism. What it means, the seven horns speaks of his perfect omnipotence, all powerful, perfect power. Not only has he got power, but he has seven eyes. That means he's omniscient, he sees all, got perfect sight, has night vision. He looks at the outer appearance but he can also look at your heart. Perfect vision. So the number seven in Revelation means perfection. You find that all through the Bible but whenever you see seven cut in half, get this before I take my seat. Whenever you see seven cut in half, it always means danger. Not sometimes, but all the time. Seven cut in half is always despair, always doom, always disaster. Elijah prayed to God. To lock up the heavens three and a half years. That's half of seven. But if you look at Revelation chapter 13 and then we're through. Go to verse 5. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemy and power was given unto him to continue Forty and two months. How long is forty and two months? If you add it all up, convert it into years, it's three and a half years. Now the number twelve, I gotta throw this one in. The number twelve is God's governmental number. How many tribes did he divide Israel up in? Twelve, huh? How many disciples did he have? How many months are there in a year? That's not by accident. That's all God. All right. I'm through. <laughs>